Good morning. Today is the 11th of Av, the 15th of August. And we are now going to look at the first paragraph of Shema. And we're at the bottom of Kuf Kuf Bet 122, uh, side A, in Shorish Mitzvah Satfila and Derech Mitzvah Secha. Ve'avta et Hashem. Hinei mikan adu vishearecha umem bet teivot. So we said that from ve'ahavta, the beginning of the first paragraph, not the Shema itself, the Shema is six words in and of themselves. By the way, that completes it to, to being seven, uh, like eight times seven. Uh, Sorry, 8 times 6. Because we have 42, 7 times 6. Right? <laughs> Am I right? Words. How many words do we have? Words. So, so 7 times 6, 42. Okay. And 6 more would be 48. So if we, if we added the Shema the paragraph and, the and the Shema itself, ah, then ah, we'd get 48. another multiple of 6. Ah, but here we're talking about the 42. Okay. Matchil Shem Embet. And we said that this is called the, 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 the right, name right, of 42. Now, what does this mean, name actually signify? What, what does it represent? So I think, I think we even started this, that all the elevations are with the name of 42. Every time you're elevating, which means really um, any kind of elevation, usually it's between worlds, between states of consciousness. A lot of times when we say worlds, what we mean is the, the world that a person lives in. In Hebrew, there's an idiom, Bezo Lamani Chai. In what world do I live? And what people mean by that, they don't mean they're on Venus or Mars. Sorry, what they mean to say is, um, I'm not sure of what I'm seeing. Like, I'm not sure of my environment. So to say world, even in modern Hebrew, is like to say, in what, in what consciousness state are you? So when we say world in, in Kabbalah, many, many of the times what we mean is, is states of consciousness. And in Hasidus it usually refers to a person's relationship to Hashem. So the lower down the world, the less connection there is. The higher up, all the way up to Atzilus, to emanation, there the consciousness is only divine. So it's like I'm living only with God. So anytime we're elevating, we're going between the worlds, and we talked about Erev Shabbos, that so we say this before the Chadodi, because we're now all the worlds are rising, everything is rising. So we say this name of 42, and again, we say it in this, in, in this uh, liturgical poem, Ana Bechoach. Shekola ala'ot emalado, all the elevations are through this name. Kemo shekatu bishtayim yofif. Now, we mentioned six, because seven times six is 42. So 42 is a multiple of 6, and Shema also has 6 words. What's the 6 here? What's, what's that got to do with? So there's a verse in, the beg- in uh, chapter 6 of Isaiah, which is usually considered to be his first prophecy. Um, the sages say that Isaiah started prophesizing on the day of the great, um, you would say, earthquake, but it's, it's not clear if it was a physical earthquake or a spiritual earthquake. What happened was that there was a king, his name was Uziah, and he decided that not only would he be a king, he also wanted to be a priest. And so he decided to bring the incense. And he took incense from um, within... He took incense from where they kept the incense, and he wanted to bring it, where do you put the incense? On the inner uh, altar, the golden altar inside the sanctuary. So he went in and he put it on, and they warned him. They told him, you can't do this, but he did it anyway. And so the, the account in the Book of Kings is that he came out with leprosy on his forehead. Like that that was a sign that he had done something wrong, and because he was a leper, he couldn't uh, remain a king, and his son Yotam, he took over. And Yotam, because of that, is considered to be one of the most righteous kings because he didn't act like a king. He basically he was like a liaison between his father, who was in a closed chamber, he mm. couldn't come out, and the kingdom. Mm. And he, he was such a righteous, considered to be such a righteous king for this, that when Rashbi, Rav Shimon Bar Yochai, says, I and my son can... Um, this is the original, this is the origin of Christianity, really. They said, 
Rajvi said, I can um, free the world of all its sins. And he said, not o- I can free it from all the sins from, um, r- that are right now. He says, if my son Yotam, if my son Elazar joins me, then we can free the world for, from all its sins from the creation until now. And if Yotam ben Uziyahu joins us, then we can free the world from the beginning of time until the end of time. Meaning that Yotam adds the future into their ability to free the world of sin. And what they mean is to take the burden of the sin. It's like, poturim et ha'olam. Liftor is like to wipe clean the slate. So he's such a, a, a great uh, individual. In any case, so that, that was the day, that day the Uziyahu brought that incense, that there was either a great earthquake or it was a spiritual earthquake. And that's considered to be the first prophecy that Isaiah saw. What did Isaiah saw, see in his first prophecy? He saw the, the divine chariot. So just like Ezekiel in chapter, chapter 1 sees the divine chariot, and Zechariah also sees the divine chariot. So uh, Isaiah also sees it. The difference between them is that each one saw it in a different world, meaning at a different level of connection to God. Isaiah sees the highest. And he sees the angels differently than, um, than Ezekiel does. Ezekiel says the angels are all four-faced and they, they, they have uh, four sides and everything is with fours there. But Isaiah sees everything with six. And what does that mean that he sees it with six? He says, I see angels and they have two wings. They have six wings. With two wings they cover their face and with two wings they cover their body, and with two wings they fly. That's what he sees. So that's considered to be the chariot. What's the chariot? It's, it's run by these angels. The chariot is what ascends and descends. That's what goes up and down, as it were. So that's why the quote is, I saw with two he, he flies. Ezekiel also saw that they were able to move, but it wasn't the same type of, uh, of thing wasn't flying by their own strength. Rather, by Ezekiel, they're, they're flying by the strength of the wind. Yeah. The wind carries them. Yeah. But Isaiah sees that they have their own ability to levitate. Vubchinat aliyota neshama. So he says what Isaiah, Isaiah was in the world of creation, Ezekiel in the world of formation, and Zechariah is in the world of action. So what Isaiah saw that is what a person experiences, or that is the method by which a person rises from one level to another. And it's very interesting that the, the imagery is so uh, physical. You would think that maybe in order to um, gravitate, to levitate, <laughs> which really means not to float, but rather to have your consciousness ascend to a higher level, maybe you would do something more intellectual. But no, this is the, 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 the practice, and this was used by all the <coughs> prophets and all the Kabbalists, is one of using Ana Bechoach. It's, it's like imagining as it were, and there's a whole question, how do you do this? And it was uh, many years ago, uh, in the, in the uh, late 90s, that uh, Rav Ginsburg taught us the whole intent, intention behind the Ana Bechoach, and it was all based on this uh, having six wings and how to actually do this. <laughs> so it was a series of long uh, ten, ten classes that he explained everything. Not, not that I ever... Would you call that practical? No, it's intellectual. It's very meditative. Yeah. And therefore, every time that we need to elevate our consciousness, we say, Ana Bechoach. For instance, another place that we say it, apart from before the Chadodi, is when we're saying Krishna on, on bed, that we, now we need to lift our soul up back to its uh, source. Because we're placing, we're giving our, soul, our, our psyche into Hashem's hands. Therefore, we say to prepare ourselves for this. And it says the simple reason for this is that the whole Ana Vechach, like we said, the whole name of 42 is related to Gvura. In Gvura you would think is might, but 
the left side of the Sefirot, where Gvura is, as opposed to the right side, is always from below to above. And the right axis is always from above to below. That's the difference between them. So, for instance, if you think about a male and a female, the right side being the male, the left side being the female, the male descends, because he's the right axis, and he descends in order to elevate the feminine. The masculine descends in order to elevate the feminine. Okay. Like we said, there's this question because Shema, the first paragraph of Shema, Ve'ahavta, is all about loving kindness. It's when you do Hashem's will. So why is it all a gvura? Why is it siluk? Why is it something leaving? And so why... <coughs> is the name that's included here, the name of 42, are there 42 words of Gvura? And there, in chapter 12, he says, I explain this in short. And we called it, We said this is called the Chlifu Duchtayu, they trade places, that the light of might, the name is the light, is within the vessel of loving kindness. But now he's going to give us a longer explanation, which we will see tomorrow.